thousands of things that we do that influence each and every one of you all. And trust me, there are thousands of things that we do twice a month that, uh, that affect each and every one of you and your families and what will affect your kids and your grandkids. So it's great to see uh, a, a huge crowd like this. We'll go on and get the preliminaries done, and then I'll kind of explain how I proceed with, uh, with one of these. It's really a hearing, and it's an argument of did the Planning Commission make the right decision or did they not? So uh, at this time, uh, Kenny, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Master King? Here. Master Barger? Here. Master Hughes? Here. Master Combs? Here. Judge Clark? Here. Uh, you all have had a chance to look at the minutes of the last meeting. If there are no changes or no discussion, then a motion would be in order to approve those that submitted in your package. So moved. Second. Master <clears throat> King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, Treasurer's report, we received that at our last meeting, but uh, as always, that's available to any, anybody. Everybody can come in the office. If there are any questions after the court meeting about any of the claims, uh, Glenna's here. She couldn't find a seat, so she's in her office, but she's available to answer any questions anybody there might have. Uh, I'd like to agend, uh, amend the agenda just for a little bit. Jerry Ann Shaw is here to talk to us a little bit about the health fair. And uh, I'd like to ask before we get into the business that Jerry Ann come up and talk to us a little bit about the health fair. Thank you. And I'll make it brief. I know you guys have a lot of business to cover, but we did want to announce the health fair. Patty A. Clay Regional Medical Center partners with the Altruza Club of Richmond every year for an annual health fair. It's the largest health fair that's held in Madison County. So we want to make sure and invite everyone out to this event. This year it's going to be on April 19th. It's a Thursday. We start at 6 a.m. in the morning because we do blood work for um, some of the visitors that come into that and they like to fat they have to fast for some of these blood tests. So we start at 6 a.m. and it goes until 1 p.m. Um, we have several free screenings um, that are offered that day and then we also do some optional blood test a full metabolic and lipid profile for $15 which is a really great deal and um, so we we come in we do your blood work and then we've got some snacks for you because if you've been fasting overnight you're quite hungry and then we mail you your results so it's a great opportunity for you guys to take advantage of this so we hope to see you guys out there on April 19th at the Richmond Mall and that's the old Richmond Mall that's on the bypass behind Red Lobster okay. thank you Thank you, Jerry, and we appreciate you coming in. And we hope everybody can get involved in that because uh, we know how important our health is. Dr. Mianchi, don't we? <laughs> okay, first on the agenda, land use change. Keaton excavating 1721 Barnes Mill Road, UC7 Ag to UC4 General Commercial for 2.12 acres. I'm going to go over the Planning Commission's recommendation first, and this is the pre procedure that I'm going to follow today. I'm going to allow, apparently, we have attorneys representing Mr. Keaton here that would like to argue the case, and then we have an attorney representing those residents on Barnes Mill. Now, I, I don't open it up to everybody standing up and screaming and talking. I think if we've got representatives, legal representatives from both sides, then I think they are very capable of speaking on behalf of both their clients. So I'm, I'm not going to open this meeting up and let everybody in the crowd stand up and start talking and telling what a wonderful guy Mr. Keating is or what a hazard it is to the residents of Barnes Mill. What we're going to do is this court is going to listen to the to argument from both sides and then we'll make the decision whether the Planning Commission uh, did the, the right thing, whether they made the right decision according to our comprehensive plan and to our regulations that we've had in place since 1997. So I'm going to read this, go over this a little bit. As a result of a public hearing held on February 21st, 
6 o'clock in the fiscal courtroom, the Madison County Planning Commission heard and reviewed the following application for an amendment to a land use management change. Keaton Excavating Incorporated, property 1721 Barnes Mill Road in Richmond, proposed to change 2.12 acres from its original classification of UC7 Ag to UC4 General Commercial. In accordance with KRS 100.213, the applicant's justification for the request was, the proposed land use, uh, land use map amendment is in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan due to the location of the land, the dimensions of the land, the natural aspects of the land, previous alter, al alter, alternatives to the land, previous plotting of the land, the activity of the land, the intensity of uses of the land, and interrelationships between the land and other sites. They also noted that the existing zoning classification is inappropriate and the proposed zoning application is appropriate for reasons that include the location of the land, the dimensions of the land, the natural aspects of the land, previous alternatives to the land, previous platting of the land, the activity on the land, and the intensity of uses of the land, and interrelationships between the land and other sites. Upon hearing testimony from the applicant, as well as those in support and opposition to the proposed change, the Madison County Planning Commission recommends the request for the, for the land use change to be denied. Motion was made by Dave Bohannon, seconded and approved by the commission to recommend to the physical court that the request to change the land from UC7 Ag to UC4 General Commercial for the above property be denied and have it made its finding of fact. Its finding of fact was the land use change request is not in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan and that is outlined in the Madison County Land Use Regulation section 4023, page 28, land used for commercial proposals shall be located at the intersections of major highways or wherever major highways intersect with other important connector or connector roads. Site requirements for commercial uses shall include water for fire flow, waste disposal, uh, and that's sanitary sewer, regional sewer, and the, the necessary utilities is stated in section 402.3, land use regulations. Commercial uses located along major highways shall be located adjacent to existing commercial uses. This property is surrounded by agricultural and residential uses only and is not closer than approximately two miles from any other commercial use. The property is located on the far most outer edge of the urban corridor and is surrounded by agriculture and residential. Section 402 of the land use regulations state accordingly, residential land use shall be given a great deal of special consideration in the overall development taking place in a given area. Uses that are detrimental to residential areas should be discouraged or shielded from residential areas in such a way as to mitigate any detrimental effects. The approval of commercial use zoning adjacent to residential uses must not be con conducive to the residential area. The existing zone of classification given to the property is appropriate for agriculture and or residential use. The property is suitable for residential use, which is permitted, which is permitted use in the agricultural zoning. And the proposed zoning classification for general commercial is not appropriate. Uh, as we said, the Planning Commission made the decision to deny the proposed zone change. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of other stuff. I'm sure that the attorneys representing both sides will do that for us. So at this time, and I'm not sure who is representing the, Mr. Keaton, but- uh, Hi, my name's Ed Logan. Ed, mm -hmm. it's good to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, if I could ask you to come up and present your argument, why the Planning Commission made the wrong decision in uh, denying the land use change. Sure. 
May it please the court, I, first of all, I, I was interested in listening to those findings of fact because from the minutes that I read, those findings of fact were not made before the vote took place and did not occur prior to a vote on uh, this particular zone matter. So I think it's interesting that they appeared subsequent to that. Uh, however, under any of the, the scenarios, uh, the findings that are supposed to be made, uh, one of the things that uh, didn't apparently appear in there was a finding that this particular property had been planted not by Mr. Keaton, uh, had a large metal building built on it, not by Mr. Keaton, had been used for various storage of equipment and other purposes, not by Mr. Keaton, at least two years before he bought it. Uh, he purchased it in 2005, and at least in 2002 or three, the property was used uh, in the same manner he was, but not by him. Now, when the plat was filed, Mr. Keaton didn't propose a plat. Mr. Keaton didn't bring it to the, the uh, county to do that. Instead, the previous owner did. And the Planning Commission approved that plat. And they approved a plat of 2.12 acres. Your own regulations and your own uh, ordinance, comprehensive plan or otherwise, says that agriculture's got to be five. Can't be less than five. So from the very start that we're looking at this, we have a two acre track zoned agricultural that can't be agricultural under your own regulations and under your own comprehensive plan. Mr. Keaton moves in, has paid for his licenses and has been operating his business there since 2005. Every time that something occurred, whether it was uh, gravel that was put down, the planning office went out and looked at it, approved it. If it was concrete that was put down, planning office went out, no complaints from the planning office, no notices of any violations, nothing. Lighting put up, same thing. Uh, all along, he's paid for and had a, a license to operate and has been operating. And at some point in time, recently, it became a problem with uh, some or one or more neighbors. There are a lot of people obviously in opposition to it now. But he operated there as his business for several years prior to doing that. And when we get to that point, one of the things that is in the comprehensive plan, under the goals and objectives, is that it says that it's, it's vitally important that Madison County pursue additional opportunities for the retention, expansion, attraction, and diversification of various economic en uh, entities. The comprehensive plan also notes that there is a need for growth of clean, light, industrial. Comprehensive plan also notes that 66% of the urban quarter, which this is in, uh, is underdeveloped. Planning Commission notes that they want to retain businesses. That's part of the, the plan on page 19, retention and expansion of existing businesses, diversification of the economy, and uh, into different sections of the uh, plan. So Madison County has noted that their agricultural land is going down. Their agricultural demand is going down. And they have put in their goals and objectives. We want to bring in businesses. We want to keep the businesses we've got, and we want them to expand. That's part of the comprehensive plan is not a straitjacket. The comprehensive plan is a guide. The comprehensive plan in this case gives the flexibility to look at existing businesses and to be used that way. And in this particular case, this is an existing business. And yes, he did expand his business. Uh, all along, coming in openly, he's been, uh, I don't know how many times the planning office has been out there for various complaints. Uh, every time they go out and look and go, okay, now that's, that's fine, move on. Uh, he has absolutely done nothing intentionally uh, to hide anything. He's been open. He's had advertisements in the, in the newspaper. He's run his business there since 2005. And now he's told that it's agricultural and what has been there really shouldn't have been there, really shouldn't have been permitted before you got it. So it was being used before 2005. He didn't put that building up. He didn't store things in it. He didn't have equipment out there then. Somebody else did. And now he's come along afterwards and being told, I'm sorry, 
uh, it's wrong. So he applied for his own change, which he thought was the next appropriate thing to do. And in that zone change, if you're going to have any type of light industrial, this operation is about as light as you're going to get. This is not uh, a heavy uh, uh, industry type manufacturing center where people are coming and going all the time. This is a come in, in the morning and get their trucks, head out to work and come back and put them up in the evening. It doesn't get much easier than that. Uh, all I have to say is that when you're, you're looking at what, what was done, you have to look at what he's got there, what he's had there, what he is continuing to do there, and whether or not uh, it, it reverts back to an agro, if it reverts back to agricultural, nothing that's there can be there because it's not five acres. And it wasn't grandfathered in, it was approved. It was approved at least in 2004, we think maybe in 2002, but it was after 1997. And he didn't do that, somebody else did. If there's anybody that is entitled to uh, some type of protection with regard to what they relied upon and what they did, it's Mr. Keaton. So we would submit that the Planning Commission uh, ignored the obvious, which is it isn't agricultural, that they made findings that uh, were not supported by testimony, or at least if you'll read the, the uh, transcript of the hearing, what they determined it would be on had nothing to do with the testimony that took place in the record. We believe that they were in error and that it should be remanded back for consideration. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Uh, now, who would be here representing the... Judge, my name is James Hodge. I represent all the nation. Thank you, James. If you would take the mic and explain to us why you feel like the Planning Commission uh, did the right thing in denying this approved well, change. I've known Mr. Hodge for many years, and I, I, I also know that when he says he represents all the neighbors, he doesn't mean throughout the entire county. I, I understand. He just that. means the ones that pay me. <laughs> <clears throat> that may be the most important. It is to Mr. Hodge. <clears throat> Do I? I want to flip it. <laughs> uh, no, you can go ahead and flip it. Here you go, Dwayne. Judge, uh, members of the fiscal court, as I said, my, my name is James Hodge. I represent the neighbors. And uh, it's an honor for me to be here in Madison County. I don't know uh, whether this is appropriate or not, but how many of you all know where Poozy Ridge is? Everybody here know where Poozy Ridge is? I just married a girl from Poozy Ridge. <laughs> you what? I just married a girl from Poozy Ridge. Uh, and still and will. I might say it was my first wedding after 59 years. <laughs> <laughs> and still together. So, so she's so she's a good girl. <laughs> and uh, you know where Page Hill is. Uh, matter of fact, we just got appropriation from Frankfurt to redo Page Hill. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Logan and I, for, since a disclaimer, by the way, we're, we're classmates in law school. We started law school the same year. We graduated the same year from UK. Uh, not, not, not that it's got a great deal of bearing. That wouldn't on be this a case. conflict, would it? Yeah, yeah, it's a conflict. Yeah, it's a conflict. <laughs> we not, went to different high schools. <clears throat> yeah, we went to different high schools <clears throat> and uh, practice law in different cities now. But we're both honored to be here in Madison County. For what it's worth, uh, and it doesn't have any bearing on this case, but uh, uh, you may have married somebody from uh, Poozy Ridge. Uh, I was born from somebody from Poozy Ridge. Uh, my, my mother and all her sisters grew up on my grandfather's farm, which was on Poozy Ridge at the top of Page Hill. I, I hope you'll bear with me. Uh, since, since Eddie's here, I'm assuming there's a chance that there might be an appeal from any decision, irrespective of which way we go here. And, and as a consequence, we have to spend a little bit of time building a record. And with, with your all's permission, uh, I, would, I would like to ask very respectfully and very quietly, everybody here who's opposed to this zone change, please quietly stand up and then sit down without saying anything. Thank you. 
Uh, in addition, if it's if it's all right with the judge, we have petitions from petitions or letters from about 148 people, I think, that we would like to submit and give to the clerk. And I understood that uh, Mr. Curry is going to make a short presentation afterwards. Yes, sir. But that I could confirm certain things that were in the record before the planning commission with Mr. Curry. Is that permissible, That's Judge? That's permissible as long as you don't get too windy. All right. We, we, we'll be real short. <laughs> Do you have the ability, I understand there, there's a future land use map. Uh, that that shows how this property is designated for future use. Do you have the ability to either put that? Can we take our stuff down, Jonathan, and, and let Mr. Curry put his stuff up for a minute? Yes, sir. These fellows are here to provide the tech technology because neither Mr. Logan and I have any idea how to do that sort of stuff being that we're old guys. Well, I don't either. <laughs> I'm probably as old as both of you all anyway. You've managed to keep your hair color a lot better than we have. And I've never, I've never put anything on it either. Ask my hairdresser. <laughs> it's just good clean living, Jane. Plenty of it. <laughs> All right, okay. Mr. Curry, can you show the judge and the magistrates where the subject property is? This is the property that's in question there, 1719, 1721. This, this is Mr. Keaton's property that you'll see there in the center of the map. Okay, and it's shown in yellow. That's correct. <coughs> and and what, what does yellow mean? <clears throat> this is the, the future land use map that's on the very last page of the comprehensive plan and it shows this area the future proposed use of this land a single family okay then let me just ask you a, a couple other things it was already said in the findings that in addition to being designated as single family residential on the future land use map this property is at the extreme edge of the urban corridor is that correct that is correct and it's not located in any of the growth centers in Madison County as shown on the comprehensive plan. Is that correct? Yes, sir. <coughs> and Barnes Mill Road is designated as a rural minor collector in the comprehensive plan. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And there's no intersection of another major road with Barnes Mill Road at the point where Mr. Keaton's property is located. That's correct. And the closest commercial property to Mr. Keaton's property is about two miles away. That's, that's, that's what was stated in the planning commission. Okay. At the time of the adoption of the comprehensive plan, there were approximately 53,000 acres of land in the urban corridor. And if I recall, at the planning commission meeting, there was testimony that <coughs> approximately 36,000 acres of that land remains undeveloped in the urban corridor. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And since the adoption of the 2010 comprehensive plan, there have been no major changes, social, economic, so forth, out in this area, have there? No, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Uh, let me go as quick as I can as I said I need to build a record uh, we're not gonna have any testimony we're not gonna put on any new proof other than what was at the Planning Commission we will go through and explain for the judge and, and the magistrates uh, the impact of what was presented at the Planning Commission and Jonathan if you could go to uh, tab one which is the required findings he told me he could do this real quick now. You all probably know all this, but up in front of you is what's required under Kentucky law that, a, that an applicant for a zone change has to prove by substantial evidence, and the burden of proof is on the applicant, in order to uh, 
meet the threshold for granting a zone change. Even if all this is proved, the Planning Commission doesn't have to recommend a zone change and you don't have to approve a zone change. But at a minimum, the applicant has to prove the request is in agreement with the comprehensive plan, which was shown before the Planning Commission. It's clearly not that or that the existing zoning is inappropriate and the proposed zoning is appropriate or there have been major changes of economic, fiscal, or social nature which are, which are not anticipated in the current 2010 comprehensive plan and which substantially altered the character. Now, the, before the Planning Commission, it was plainly shown that none of these were met, met even slightest, in the slightest form or fashion met. Jonathan, if you could go to, well, yeah, I changed my mind. Go to tab two. Case law in Kentucky, specifically the case of McKinstry versus Wells, says that in determining whether a zone change is in accordance with the comprehensive plan, you've got to look at the entire comprehensive plan. And Mr. Logan did a good job of going and picking out some things of the goals and objectives that would lead you to think that the comprehensive plan might suggest that this change was in agreement with it, but you, but you have to look at the entire plan that was pointed out by some of the commissioners at the Planning Commission meeting, as a matter of fact. And as we go through this, we'll show you that this zone change clearly does not comply or is not in accordance with the comprehensive plan. Jonathan, if you could go to tab three. The, these are findings of fact that we prepared before we knew what type of hearing you all wanted to have. And we're perfectly comfortable in you using the findings of fact that were prepared at the Planning Commission, or we're perfectly comfortable in you using these findings of fact. But I put these up here and, and, and we may need to Unless all these folks can see a whole lot better than I can, we probably need to blow that up a little bit. But, but going down through here, I'd just like to walk through you quickly what has been shown at, at the Planning Commission meeting and why the Planning Commission made the correct, correct decision. Looking at, at number one, number one is a finding that the requested change is not in accordance with the comprehensive plan because it conflicts with all these provisions that are listed here and and in a if you look at that i just went through all these items with mr curry but the subject property is surrounded by agricultural and residential uses right now it's on the extreme outer edge of the urban corridor it's not located in any of the growth centers in Madison County that are shown on your comprehensive plan. And most importantly, most importantly, it's designated for single family residential use on the future land use map of the Madison County comprehensive plan, which is the last page in your comprehensive plan. In other words, when it's shown in yellow on that map, it means that as part of the planning process, it's been decided in Madison County that the appropriate use for this property in the future is single family residential, not commercial. So that in and of itself shows you that this change is not in accordance with the plan. But to amplify on that, if you go on through B through E, the plan requires for commercial property to be at intersections of major roads. Well, this property is not at any intersection, and it's certainly not at an intersection of a major road. Barnes Mill Road is specifically designated as a rural minor collector at no intersection. The comprehensive plan also requires commercial property to be adjacent to other commercial property. And as Mr. Curry just confirmed, and it's in the record of the Planning Commission, this property is at least two miles from the closest commercial use, which is a C store down the road, if you recall, that I think was grandfathered in, and then the next commercial use is <coughs> down near the Pond Church. Further, the, the property doesn't have adequate utilities, which is required by the comprehensive plan, 
it doesn't have adequate sewer protection, doesn't have adequate fire protection, it doesn't have adequate protection for hazardous waste and, and the kind of, of oil and so forth that's being deposited in the ground out here right now. And then lastly, there's a big section in your comprehensive plan that says residential uses should be given special consideration and that steps should be taken to prevent adjacent commercial uses to be, from being detrimental. Well, if you've been out there and looked at this property, it's got all sorts of things on it that are detrimental to the adjacent residential use. Jonathan, if you could go to the next page, please. So in, in sum and substance, this requested zone change is not in any shape, form, or fashion in accordance with the adopted comprehensive plan that you have previously adopted. <clears throat> then as to the other required findings, whether the property, the existing zoning is appropriate and whether the proposed zoning is appropriate, the existing zoning is clearly appropriate because it's in agreement with the comprehensive plan and it in the existing zoning even though it's called agricultural it permits residential and agricultural and the property is no closer than two miles to any commercial and the subject property and there was there was significant testimony at the planning commission about this the subject property could be used for residential Mr. Curry has confirmed to me the subject property under your regulations, as they've long been interpreted, could be used for all sorts of agricultural uses. But as a practical matter, and, and there, there was some testimony to the effect that it would be hard to use this property for residential, but as a practical matter, as anybody here who's in the development business knows, sometimes when you develop property, you have to relocate utilities. There's a little utility line that runs across this property, but it could easily be ro re relocated along the edge of the property. The, uh, the, the pole barn that's on this property could be relocated to a new site for Mr. Keaton's business at another location. Mr. Keaton's in the excavation business. He could, he could by himself clean this property up and it would be a nice residential site. And that's what the planning commission found. On the other hand, the proposed zoning is clearly inappropriate and it, and it constitutes what's called spot zoning. This is a classic attempt at spot zoning and, and we'll go through that in just a second. But the proposed zoning would permit the use of the property for uses that are clearly inconsistent with the, with the present property that surrounds it. And to just give you a short litany of what some of the problems would be caused by the proposed use. The proposed use, or in fact the existing use, which has gone on for some time now, contrary to the provisions of your zoning regulations, the existing use, and, and there was significant testimony at the Planning Commission, existing use generates heavy truck traffic. It uses bright outdoor lights after dark, which shine on to the adjacent properties. It emits loud noise from before dawn until late into the night. There are big diesel trucks up there and they fire up in the morning before dark. They're going over there after dark at night. It produces noxious odors from diesel fuel and exhaust fumes. And it discharges oil and so forth into sump pups on the property where there's no sewer system. And lastly, it mars the view from what is the scenic corridor known as Barnes Mill Road. Then th three, more, three more points. As Mr. Curry has mentioned, there have been no major changes out here of the type that's required under zoning law to justify zone change. No, no changes whatsoever since 2010. There's two, two things. There's no compelling need for this rezoning. No compelling community need. As we said, when, when the comp plan was adopted, there's 53,000 acres of land located in the urban corridor in Madison County, and 36,000 acres of that land is undeveloped. So there's ample land in Madison County for commercial operations that are better locations than out on a scenic corridor such as Barnes Mill Road. Then last and maybe most important of all, 
if if you grant this zone change, then it's a precedent. And for future zone changes, it puts you back under number three, which it was on the first exhibit we had on that board down there. If you grant this zone change, it will be a major change not anticipated by the comprehensive plan. And then the next fella can come along and Jim Hodge can go out there and buy some property next to Mr. Keaton and I can decide that I want to put a truck stop out there or I want to run taxi cabs <coughs> out there or I want to have a radio station out there or I want to have a hotel out there. These are things that are allowed under, under your zoning ordinance. And I can come in and ask for a zone change. And, and you guys can say, well, Mr. Hodge, you're not entitled. You're not in accordance with the comprehensive plan. But I can say, but you approved a zone change for Mr. Keaton, and that was a major change not anticipated by the comprehensive plan. And that's then the precedent for allowing Barnes Mill Road to develop commercially all up and down the strip. And you can't prevent that at that point in time because the courts will uphold that because this would be a major change that would be the precedent for future changes. And by, by my reading of your land use regulations, if you do that out there, you can have telephone companies, radio and TV stations, utility companies, bus lines, taxi cabs, vehicle sales, mobile home sales, flea markets, dry cleaners, hotels, motels, many warehouses, service stations, repair garages, commercial truck washes, theaters, bowling alleys, all sorts of commercial uses could be opened up out there. And Jonathan, if we could go to tab five. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Tab, no, five spot zones is what we want. I alluded to spot zoning, and I think that's what all these badges these folks have on out here. Spot zoning, as shown on this board, spot zoning is uniformly condemned by the courts as a practice which undermines the integrity of zoning. And spot zoning is rezoning a little track of land out in the middle of other track of land that's not consistent with the comprehensive plan and is not consistent with the character of the neighborhood. And that's exactly what this request is. It's a request asking you to approve spot zoning out in the middle of, out in the middle of an area that's residential and agricultural for commercial. There's no commercial within two miles of this and your comprehensive plan shows this entire corridor is supposed to be in the future single family residential. So this is a classic case of spot zoning. And then if you could go to the next tab, there's been some talk and there's some evidence in the record that Mr. Keaton could make more money obviously if this property were reclassified as commercial out here than he could under the existing zoning. But it's set forth up here the fact that commercially zoned property is more profitable than residentially zoned property is not a sufficient basis to grant a zone change. And the Kentucky Court of Appeals held that in this case it's cited up there back in 1998. And then lastly and most importantly, there's been some concern that apparently, or there, there, there's Mr. Logan's arguing that the county hadn't treated Mr. Keaton right. But if you go back and you look at the Planning Commission minutes, at the Planning Commission, Mr. Keaton acknowledged when he bought the property, he knew what the zoning was and he understood the rules of the game. And Mr. Curry confirmed that at the Planning Commission and Mr. Keaton acknowledged that at the Planning Commission. So if you, if you can go back to tab one, Jonathan, and on your board in front of you, I simply submit to you that the applicant has not met the burden of proof by substantial evidence, hadn't even come close. The request clearly is not in accordance with the comprehensive plan. The existing zoning classification clearly is appropriate, and the proposed zoning classification is inappropriate 
and there have been no major changes out there. And in addition, there's no compelling need required for the zoning that's sought. Now, if you could at this point, just so they have it, could you pass out those booklets and particularly give uh, one to the county attorney? And we would simply ask you to follow the recommendation of your planning commission, which did a good job, had a thorough hearing, let everybody talk at length, and it appears that you've got a good zoning ordinance and you've got a good comprehensive plan, and the decision of the planning commission was in accordance with that, and, and we would ask you to follow their recommendation, deny this zone change, and we would leave it to your attorney to advise you as to whether you should use their findings or these findings or some combination thereof, and subject to any questions anybody might have, I would express my appreciation for your attention. Thank you, James. Did you watch a tape eight weeks ago and just copy my exact speech on another proposed one we had? No, sir, I guess great minds <laughs> think alike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wayne, do you want to come up and let's let's address some of the comments made by by, by Ed and James. Okay. First off, that it was approved initially, and then it was a business, and what steps that planning and development took, uh, along with the planning commission, as far as this property is concerned. Right. And, and give us kind of the history of it. And Judge, that's will all be a summary of the evidence that was yes. that Yes, that's correct. exactly that's what correct. it is. That's correct. Your Honor, I, I would note uh, for the purposes of the record, uh, Mr. Hodge loves to kill trees, and I, I noticed that this is a, a neighbor's exhibit that has been filed. There's also been a list that's been filed, signed out. I would object for the record to any of that being introduced because that's newly introduced evidence that was not part of the consideration by the Planning Commission. In, in, in response to that, there's nothing in that booklet that wasn't before the planning commission. It's just part of my argument and demonstrative aids to my argument. <coughs> Objections noted, Judge. I think Mr. Kerry can proceed. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. In, uh, uh, I guess to give a little bit of history on the property, it's the previous use of this property was agricultural. Um, the, the, the coming of the uh, metal storage building was a result of an existing barn being burned down on a farm, and Darvis McIntosh was the owner of the property at the time, uh, reconstructed the barn as a metal building uh, back at that time, and it was on an existing farm. Uh, Mr. McIntosh was the one, and he got an agricultural exemption for the barn, saying it would be used for agricultural purposes. Uh, Mr. McIntosh did own the property previously and had begun to use the property for commercial purposes for which we began to receive numerous complaints. Uh, we followed up on that. In uh, 2004, Mr. McIntosh uh, requested a, a zone change of the property to rezone it to neighborhood commercial, uh, which was ultimately denied at that time, and that was in 2004. Um, Mr. Keaton uh, purchased the property in 2005, and um, uh, Mr. Keaton and I had had numerous conversations before he bought the property. He was aware of of the fact that Mr. Mr. McIntosh had used the property for commercial purposes, and we shut it down. And that was the reason that he was uh, selling the property at that point. Mr. Keaton's intentions originally was that he was going to build a, a house for himself there and utilize the building to store his equipment in which would render the building as a, an incidental use and not a primary uh, or principal use of the property for commercial purposes. Mm -hmm. In 2007, Mr. Keaton presented a zone change to rezone the property to neighborhood commercial uh, for the God's Outreach Community Food Bank, um, of which the zone change was denied uh, at that time, stating that, that it wasn't appropriate for commercial purposes. Um, once we realized, once the 
as the zoning office once we realized that Mr. Keaton uh, had no intentions of constructing his own principal residence on the property and we kept receiving complaints on it then we had to do something with it and that's when we began to to notify him that he was in violation of the of the zoning regulations and um, that's when he came back and applied for this new zone change the, I think it's it's been clear in the record what the Planning Commission's recommendation was uh, and that the, the Planning Commission feels the property is more that the existing land use classification is appropriate um, because of the findings of fact that, that were made and have been stated that the land use change is not in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan and that it uh, it's not located at, at intersections of major highways um, that it doesn't have the necessary utilities for commercial uses and that um, um, that it's it's not adjacent to other commercial uses it's on the the outer edge of the urban corridor and it's surrounded by ag and residential uses and that uh, to, to rezone this for commercial does not uh, protect or does not give special consideration of the residential property that adjoins it and that the existing zoning classification is appropriate for ag or residential uses and that the uh, proposed for general commercial is not appropriate. Okay. I'm going to open it up now. Ed, you and James don't care to, if any of the managers have questions to ask you all. Are you all okay with that? Sure. Greg, I'm going to start with you. Have you got any questions for Dwayne or Ed or James? I came to the plain zoning meeting when this was brought before him and the fact that just to clear up with me is uh, Mr. Keaton did know that it was turned down and it wasn't business zone right when you purchased the when I purchased it I, yeah when I purchased it I didn't know it had been run through I, I, when I purchased it I had no idea that it had been run through any planning zone and when I purchased it I didn't know during the time after you purchased it did or did not you get with him and clarify that it wasn't business yes Judge, I, I don't know what's appropriate here what he just said is in conflict with what he said at the planning commission and we've got you've got the minutes there so no sir it's not excuse me just well we're, we're, we're now wait now you know i'm just going to shut it down now if we're going to start yeah. conflicting what he said about what you said about what was in it because this is just a, all we're doing is we're listening to arguments whether the Planning Commission made the right decision, decision or not. So let's just, okay. well, I think we've heard enough evidence on both cases. Do you, Roger? Well, uh, have you got a question? I feel like I go got to go by what the uh, Commission has done in the past, not what they did this time, but what was done in the past simply because uh, Mr. McIntosh came to us and uh, wanted his own change like Dwayne had told us. And before we ever got to court, <coughs> he pretty much knew it wasn't going to pass. And he was wanting, uh, if I understood, the last time we voted him down was uh, for storage, for campers, boats, whatever, to be put inside. And uh, we had enough knowledge to know that we needed to ask him what are you going to do with the property outside and he said well I'd be parking them around there too and renting and we said that's, that's, that's not going to happen uh, it was just a consideration that we let him put them inside and we didn't even know if that would pass or not but uh, uh, I, I, there's no win or lose for us here it's us trying to do our job and uh, we can only do it by, mostly by the information that we get um, I hate to see a gentleman that uh, that's working hard and got a business and trying to pay his bills like all of us are doing lose his business or have to move it whether it'll financially cost him so much that he can't go to another location I don't know uh, but I think we've got a good argument on both sides but I think the uh, Planning Commission has to do what they got to do okay. Billy Ray you got any comments uh, could we don't want to say a whole lot because I as anything what Roger said as I, my heart goes out to you but we're bound by these regulations and I you know and maybe we regulated ourselves silly but we got these regulations and, and we have to abide by them and, and Larry well 
everybody says this job's easy and you see it isn't but you know the law's a law and we have to go by what the law says we don't have any other choice i agree with you roger i remember when all this come up before i've been here 30 years so i remember when it come up before and that's exactly what we said it had to be on the inside and now you see where it's escalated from there so it's no easy decision but you have to make one it, it really and and, and mr keith <clears throat> it's you know, we're proud you started out, but I think you understood that everything had to be kept inside. And then all of a sudden, because I do go to Posey Ridge on a regular basis, you know, like two or 300 culverts piled up and tractor and trailers and trucks and coming in all hours of the evening and stuff. And, and I really believe probably at first, because you were running such a small operation that the neighbors really, it wasn't a big deal with a couple of trucks and you were leaving them inside at night and stuff but I mean I think I think you have to admit that you've expanded uh, a great business I mean there's no question about it but uh, the regulations are the regulations and and to me all these people in here and and it's petitions and books and stuff I, I don't pay any attention to those I pay attention to what our comprehensive plan says. And I think that you were very much aware of when you started expanding, you knew exactly what you were doing. But that, that's, that's beside the point. It's just uh, Barnes Mills is a nice area. It's all subdivisions and homes. And uh, it, it's kind of your business has got a little out of hand, I think. So that's all I'm going to say. And Kenny. Uh, I'm not going to take any further comments. I'm just going to ask for a recommendation from one of the physical court members as to accept or deny the uh, the uh, proposed the roll uh, call. Yeah. I'll make a motion to uphold the plan zoning recommendations to deny the pro the proposed change request and support the planning commission's finding the fact to deny the zone change request. Okay. On um, finding a fact of the planning and zoning, Greg. I, I think his motion was that he would approve the okay. findings that presented by the, by the Okay. Yeah. Let's... Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. <coughs> Master King. Yes. <coughs> Master Barger. Yes. Master Hughes. Yes. Master Combs. Yes. Judge Clark. Yes. Thank you all, Ed James. Thank, thank you all for coming uh, in. Judge, we appreciate how, it. How long will he have to? Of course, I'm sure he can appeal it. But uh, how long? How long is it? he have before he has to get out that's probably not right for discussion this very second yeah. i think they need to digest what's happened today and then uh, we can rely upon mr curry's advice as to what the next step so we is couldn't go on record saying you what we're going to no. do next number of days i don't think, I, I don't think that's appropriate right now larry that's i fine. think that's something that that mr keaton can work out with Dwayne, and Dwayne can work out with me okay. that's fine and but it'll be something that's suitable to the residents of Barnes Mill Road and all the subdivisions out there. Now, we're probably going to go into some more business, and I'm sure all you all have things to do, so you're very much welcome to uh, leave the courtroom if you like. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, I appreciate you all coming in. Thank you, Thank you Judge. Okay. That's what I was referring to. <laughs>
Yeah, you still. Maureen Staley, thank you for your conversation. Dixie Cup, what is it? We appreciate you supporting us. Just name, Thank you for trying to reach me. So you're a. Maureen Staley. Maureen, yes. We played telephone. Yeah, yeah, we did. He does that with everybody. Does he? Yeah. Thank you. You need to go see him. He, he loves I got a, I got an office for the park. Same place. Cone Plain or on Bobtown. We may have to take a bath for the dark kid. Let me clear my head out. I'm so proud. Appointment of W.O. Bradley to the Mass County Ambulance Board. Uh, W.O. made the decision to stay one more term, and he is uh, one of the key figures of that. So I'd like the court's permission to reappoint W.O. Bradley to the uh, EMS Board. Full we'll move. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, we've got a resolution, and this was just to on our God's Pantry food bank on the CDBG grant. Uh, they had to rebid the freezer and uh, it came in at $12,629. So we need a motion to authorize the resolution 15 to uh, rebid and buy the uh, brown walk-in freezer cooler for $12,629. So moved. Second. Master King. Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? What's the update on the food bank as far as opening it? Roger, you know, I couldn't tell you exactly, but I think they're re just, I mean, they're getting all the kitchen ready and everything's getting ready, so I think it could be in just a matter of weeks. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, open <coughs> bids on the CPE, the Next Gen 911 phone system. Uh, Wendy, is Mark, Mark, do you have those? I do have those, and I have uh, opened them up uh, during the uh, uh, morning here. They were all properly uh, sealed and packaged, and speaking with Carl, they were all received at the appropriate uh, time frame. We actually had five packages, two of which were from the same company, which was Carousel. Uh, we also had a bill from Win or a bid from Windstream from uh, Intrado Response. I guess that's how you pronounce that. In Toronto. In Toronto. In Toronto, okay, thank you. And then also Interact Public Safety Systems. Okay. I'll leave these, uh, and as always, and so forth, go through them. Wendy, if you and Carl will get with the 911 board, if, if, if that's the process you want to look, look at all of them and then a recommendation from the board to come back Mission to us. Critical will be doing a bid yeah. evaluation of all of them. They're the ones that put the spec together. For okay. Them. So they'll be doing the bid evaluation. They'll bring a recommendation to Wendy and I and then to the full board. And then we'll come back. Okay. And get that recommendation. There's no problem with the time frame, are there? Yeah, it's it's I mean, we, sooner. I mean, we sooner the better. Well, that's, yeah. that's the reason I asked that. It's of the essence. Okay. Uh, but uh, we have mission criticals here in county <coughs> waiting for you guys to have gotten those open today, so they can start pouring through them. Uh, so we, we've got everything pre-staged, so to speak, ready to evaluate those bids. Okay. Good deal. Uh, next, land use change, and this is for Laney and Greg Pointer. Uh, 697 Mount, Mount Vernon Road, uh, UC7 Ag to UC4 General Commercial for three or acres more or less. I think we have gone in depth on this. I don't think anybody in the Planning Commission had no problem with it. Nobody showed up. Is there anybody for or against that particular zone change? I think this was just lining it back up the way it should have been, Dwayne. So if there's no discussion. A motion will be in order on recommendation of the Planning Commission to approve uh, the land use change uh, for the Pointer family from UC7 Ag to UC4 General Commercial. So move. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. 
A uh, couple things in the judge's report. First, uh, the Berea Fire Department and friends of Randy Rigsby are having a celebrity dinner March the 30th at 7 o'clock at the Berea Baptist Fellowship Hall. Uh, tickets are $50 a person or $350 a table. Uh, it's at uh, uh, Columbia Steakhouse, and we all known Randy for years and years and years, and Randy's been battling uh, uh, cancer for a long time, bone cancer. So this is kind of a fundraiser to put together some money. I think he's has to go to Arkansas, all the way to Arkansas for his therapy. So I uh, want to invite everybody out to that. Uh, second was the Humane Society, and this is always a huge event. Uh, Fiesta Bowl, Chili Supper, and Silent Auction. And this is uh, Friday, April 6th at the Russell Folk uh, Action Folk Center in Berea. And they always get a great crowd for that, and that'll be something interesting. Uh, the Golf Report, uh, Clay's got that in your packets for y'all to look at. And uh, as always, if you don't have any questions or you do have questions, give call or Clay, but uh, give give Clay a call. But things are they're getting each year they're getting a little bit better, and things have been kind of tough. And then again, uh, we want on behalf of the court uh, our condolences to uh, Chief Cox, our fire chief. Uh, his father passed away, and he was the captain at the volunteer Whitehall department, but. Uh, I think the visitation is tomorrow night and the funeral's on Thursday. So uh, just wanted to tell Jim, and I talked to Jim yesterday, he came in a little bit. So that's all I've got in the judge's report. Uh, department heads, got anybody? Yeah. Sheriff, I you want to? I passed out a, uh, a home incarceration. I put some numbers together on that. I know you haven't had time to look at it, but if you want to look at it. <clears throat> Got any questions? I'd be glad to answer them. I, I know it's quick. I just laid out there when I came in, but uh, mm -hmm. these are the numbers that we can abide with, and it pretty much uh, we spent some time with Clark County people, and uh, same program they got, basically run the same way. Jerry, what I'd like to do because we did just get these. Uh, is I'd like the masters to take these home and look at them. Uh, look at, uh, he's got a cost per day and a hookup charge and things. See if you all agree to that, if you feel like maybe we can lower that a little bit. Uh, what we're trying to do with this program is break even. Uh, we're not in it to make any money off prisoners. We just want to get the people that need to be out, out. Uh, so I think it'd be good if y'all. Well, it's broke down for the uh, initial cost, and then each year thereafter, which cost will go down. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it depends on how many people you want to try to get in the program. Well, you know as well as anyone, the more you got in it, the more it's going to take to run it. True. I mean, you can't run it on a full time, a part time. If you I'm sure you probably could have paid probably 25, but if you get out 30 or 40, then it, uh, the cost will have to go up. But like you also said, you start out at the, the large cost up initially, then you know you're not going to have that the next year. It'll go down and down. That's great. But uh, and Jerry, did you have you talked to Chris about these prices, like on the laptop and stuff? That's the only thing I have. It. Chris was gone. I didn't get to okay. confer you with need him. Need to get with Chris. I'm sure we and, might be able to save some there. Yeah, and look at uh, some of those things. Uh, let the magistrates look, and hopefully in two weeks, uh, we we've got to meet about some things anyway, and we'll talk about this, and maybe we can all come up with. Uh, I'd be glad to answer any. Uh, Anything you have, that's that's the best that we could come up with at the time. Well, I I think you put together a great report, Jerry. Just well, I want to thank Michelle Everson for doing a <clears throat> lot of the legwork. She went uh, spent all day with them, Steve Noble, and went through the program how it uh, operates and everything. So we done the best we could, and okay. hopefully that'll. That's okay, fine. There are just a few things me, but we might want to tweak and then see uh, see Chris about the committee because he can probably save some money. I think so. 
Okay, so we're just going to table that. You all, all got copies of that that you can take home with you, to look at. Okay. Uh, any other department heads? If not, uh, comments from magistrates, correct? Do you have anything? Uh, it's just, uh, I see where Keith's been busy at the animal shelter. So, uh, you know, the things as all departments do, they do a good job. Just appreciate them. So that's all. Roger. Doug, you're getting more cameras, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, got a letter. I think we all got the letter from Doug about the additional cameras that he's needing. He also informed Greg and I, he might not have told the rest of it before court. I think he's bringing some money back to the county. Uh, but, uh, I guess we need to approve those cameras, don't we? Well, how will they be paid for? Commissary? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, giving a letter of 20000 today. You didn't tear it check up before you made it over? Huh? You didn't tear it check up before you made it over? <laughs> oh, okay. I think it's 4300 and some dollars. What we don't have to approve it as long as we know about it. I mean, anything under 20. But if, now, if you want to make a motion, I'm fine with that, Roger. I'd rather make a motion that we approve the cameras. Okay. What was the total? 4396 or something, I believe. Yeah, I think that was the Health Security Blair House. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Yes. Okay. Anything else, Roger? No, right. You know, I like what we had all these people come in today, and, and we say we'd like to have more citizen input. And I wonder how many, I know Chris not in here, how much traffic we get on our Madison County website. Do you have any idea? I mean, it, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good website. But one of the things that we could do is it, it, it take some surveys or informal polls by put, posting a question on the website and just get get where people what people are thinking about a particular issue. Uh, you know, sometimes not everybody gets on the internet, but, but I, I know that this involving the citizens and what's going on that would be a very powerful thing for us to do and and to start with the with our county website might be a pretty good place and I don't know how feasible it is to put a survey question on there and and, and collect some information and see see what the response is. It's, but, uh, it's no problem. So uh, it'd be worth looking at. He just walked in if you want to ask him that question. There he is. I'll be talking to you in just a few minutes. <laughs> I was listening. It gets about 600 hits a day. 600 hits a day. Hmm. Okay, anything else, Bill Yep. Mr. Cohn? Uh Yeah, two things. Uh, Scott, where are we at on our truck? How much is it going to cost us? I know it's cost us to pick these animals up. Larry, the, um, the animal truck is in the shop getting worked on right now at Lexington Truck Sales. I had to sit it over there to get its final stage of fuel injection replaced. Uh, truck had to, has had some problems since we took it over with. Uh, uh, started with uh, drag link and steering box and uh, some fuel sensors. Uh, progressed into Huey pumps and stuff like that. Just had to get it straightened out. But after tomorrow, when we get it back, should be in good working order and ready to go. How many miles a gun truck, Scott? Uh, by my tracking, 270,000 miles, and it's about 10 years old, correct? Yeah. Now, Larry, for your information, I've talked to Eddie Warren and Rich Cobb and several that work with the back settlement dollars and the money's gone this year but they feel very comfortable that there would be some money to help us buy a new truck next year again like our july budget coming up mm -hmm. yes well I, that's that's the reason i asked you that question because i mean you know and i know that's very important that we have that and uh, i'm not really comfortable with the company that's doing it but i'm thankful they are doing it let's yes. put it that way I've heard some complaints on that. You know, it's we kind of go on the farm a little bit closer, but it's hard to tell somebody that lives up the lane to drag that calf down there on a Friday and not pick it up till Monday. I mean, that's just, that's not good. But I understand that those, those things do happen. And we ask for it to be, you know, closest to the I road know. and on, you know, adjacent to gravel or some gravel or hard surface to pick it off. To, I understand, but that's the only reason I, we need to address that. Well, you up here, I seen boys buying a tracking device. What's that for? For the I've got a tracking device to track some of our vehicles to keep uh, keep tabs on them. 
We're going to do that to the whole county wide. Mm -hmm. okay. Just in the process, Leroy's talked to me about it. And we're going to put them in all county vehicles so we know where they are, what time, what they're doing. And uh, it's not that expensive, Greg, once you get the initial equipment in. Anything else for Scott, Larry? No, but I got a question for Dwayne. Uh, will you address the court on what I've been talking to you about? I know you get calls on it every day, and I just think it's something that we're going to have to do. Yeah, um, Larry had mentioned to me a couple different times, and I've brought it up to the Planning Commission, possibility of, of amending our subdivision regulations because right now the regulations in order to create any new lots at all they have to front at least 100 feet onto a public road public road being one that's maintained using public funds state local or what have you uh as we know there's there's lots of people that have property that don't have adequate road frontage if you've got farms and they want to cut off a an acre or two acres for their son or daughter on the farm if they don't have adequate road frontage on a public or public road then it violates regulations and they can't they can't create another tract or if they wanted to do a mortgage survey and just cut the house and two or three acres off of a 50 acre farm if they didn't want that to front on a public road uh, or if the house was back on the farm and it wasn't feasible to get it frontage on a public road then by our regulations you couldn't do that uh, so the Planning Commission has been pretty pretty strict with that looking at it strictly in the black and white because once you start creating that precedence and allowing this one to do it and not that one then it becomes a big issue so we are looking at it i've presented a couple of proposals to the planning commission for their consideration we are looking at possibilities of allowing uh, maybe one minor subdivision plat which would be uh, being able to divide the property into no more than three tracks they'd get one minor plat on their farm and front those those two new tracks onto uh, a private road but there'd be some stipulations that it could be never any further division and and the but, road would be Wayne, private. 50 foot right away that's right that's right I mean do you, you have to have that's what we started all this to start with I mean we used to do anything and everything on these little old 12 foot roads and then more people want to build and more people want the county to take it over so I mean and I've talked to you a little bit about this but whoever does whatever i think they've got to have a 50 foot right away yeah and the and we've looked around what a lot of the a lot of the communities do they allow them one minor plat on their property and it's on a private road but they do have to provide a 50 foot um, a 50 foot right of way back to the property so that at whatever point in time and there'd be stipulations put on the plat that it's understood there's no further division of any of the tracks without that private road being brought up to meet county standards and being brought up at their sole expense not the county's expense they can't come back and petition to you guys to take over an existing gravel 12 foot wide gravel lane they have to bring it up to meet the county road standards that's applicable at that time um, how many calls will you get a week on oh, we get several we get a bunch we get uh, you know probably uh, anywhere from a half a dozen to a dozen uh, different questions like that where, where people are wanting to create you know attract mainly it's it's families trying to create a place for their son or daughter to be able to or their parents to be able to locate on their property and have a mortgage on a separate tract of land but it just doesn't have the road frontage so that's what we're looking into and we'll draw up some proposals and I'll run it past you guys um, at the same time we run it through the Planning Commission so if you see anything that gives you heartburn or you feel like it just can't be you, you couldn't buy into if you'll let me know that I'll make sure that 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 your desire gets run through the Planning Commission at the same time too so we can but, but Dwayne here's my problem with that without the 50 foot I mean we've got and we had some developers and I'm not name naming any names that went on ball farms put private road maintenance agreement on them sold them well sold them to family then the family moves they sell out and then they sell it to somebody else and then all of a sudden these people are saying I'm paying taxes I don't want a private road maintenance agreement even though it's on the plat and even though it's in their deed it's we want the county to take the road over and stuff right. 
you know, if you knew the people, if what you, who you were helping would never leave, but in 90% of the cases, they sell out yeah. two or three years after they've been there, and then we're stuck with it. That's right, and we have done some where the owners of the property came in and said they were, it was their intention to give it to their, their children and their in-laws, and the planning commission approved that, and as soon as it got approved, it was put on the market by a realtor, every one of the lots to be sold for retail purpose, for resale purposes. So, you know, the planning commission have, and you all, by approving the regulations, we've gone full circle with this thing. We didn't, re we didn't allow anything on a, on a private road. Then we changed the regulations and said, if you're going to do 10 acres or larger, we'll let you do it on a gravel road. It's a private road maintenance agreement, all this kind of stuff. And we realized real quickly they began to abuse that, and they began to come back and begin to ask some of you to take the road over and blacktop it. So we changed the regs again and said, nope, no gravel roads. We're going to let you. It all has to be blacktop. So we're we're kind of going full circle again. But it's this one. This proposal would be just for minor subdivision plats, and they would only get this option one time on that on that original tract of ground, and after that they wouldn't get any more. I will agree with the judge about the 50 foot. I mean, I agree with you on that. But, it, you know, it's hard for me to say uh, somebody's worked all their life and they got two kids and they want to give them a tract of land and say, no, you can't do it. I mean, you know, we're not all going to live forever. Right. So, I mean, I think there's a way around it. I think if every I's dotted and every T's crossed, I don't think there'd be no problem with it. But I agree, Judge. I know where you're coming from. I get the same calls. I mean, Planning Commission, we've discussed it in the last two meetings, and we've got it up for discussion again at the work session coming up in April, and I'll have a couple of different proposals to give to them at that point, and I'll forward you guys a copy of it so you can take a look at it and see what you think. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank Good you. deal. Uh, that's really all I have, Judge. Other than that, I'm just glad to be here. Glad you're here. That's a nice shirt you got on there too. I ought to cut say something about that. Yeah, I guess you would. Any comments from <laughs> any comments from the audience? Greg, we took care of you. Anybody like to approach the court and go? If not, uh, motion would be in order to pay the claims and approve the transfer. So move. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Master yes. Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. All in favor, adjournment. Ah. Uh. Uh. <laughs>